a lesson uh, about business. So this is a topic that many of you have asked for. Um, you've asked me to do a topic um, on food. I did uh, a topic on animals, vehicles. Now today, we're going to look at business. So I have created uh, a series of um, word lists. Let me just uh, make sure that everything's working here. Again, for those of you just joining, we're going to be talking about business this morning. Um, because the previous live streams have had so many people in them, um, there we go, it looks like it's working. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a change this morning, and that's that if you have questions for me during the lesson about business, please ask them using the form that's linked in the description below, and I will post the link in the chat once in a while. The chat is going too fast for me uh, to, be able to, to be able to see all the questions. And last week, Saturday night, I missed some questions and some people were getting frustrated. So we're going to talk about business today. If you have questions, I will post the link right now in the chat. Again, please only ask questions about business. Let's try to keep it uh, on topic this morning. Anyways, I'm Bob the Canadian. If this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe or give me a thumbs up. We're going to talk about business today and I'm going to get started. The first thing I want to talk about is the handshake. Uh, and on the bottom you see the phrase, let's shake on it. So a handshake is kind of the universal symbol for business. Um, when you agree with someone uh, that you want to sell them something and they want to buy it, um, oftentimes in Canada and many other countries, you will shake on it or you will have a handshake. Um, this is kind of an informal agreement. So let's say you say you want to sell me 100 cars and I say I have the money to buy 100 cars. I don't, by the way, but let's pretend I do. Uh, we would shake on it and it would be an informal deal and we would formalize it later and I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, so let's, uh, let's go through a few things. Let's first do the first question. Why don't we try that? Let's see if it, uh, if it works here. So here's the first question. It's from Angie, and he says, could you describe the phrase, it's none of your business? So let's say I'm talking to my wife about something really important, and one of my kids is listening, and they ask a question. You would say, it's none of your business. Um, it's kind of rude to say that, but it means you're telling someone that uh, the thing that you are talking about, um, they should not be interested in. It's not their problem. It's none of their business. Let's quickly review some of the simpler words, though. We have the word businessman, but we also have the word businesswoman. And we do use these two words quite a bit, businessman, businesswoman. I think the difference is obvious. Um, we also have a word, uh, business person. We don't use this word as much. We tend to simply refer to people as a businessman or a businesswoman. But you can use the word uh, business. Uh, one sec, I gotta change something. I'm not leaving, I'm coming back. I just forgot to close the door to my room. I'm still here. I, I forgot to close the door and now I have to close the window. So there are students at school today and they were just looking at me, uh, wondering what I was doing. Why, why am I talking to the camera? Um, so we do have salesperson though. We do use this word quite a bit. So a salesperson, is someone who works for a business and they sell you things. So I have again the handshake and lots of money behind it. So you have a salesperson. Um, I hope you had a good laugh at me uh, leaving for just a moment to close my classroom door. But uh, uh, we also have saleswoman. So just as we had businesswoman, we also have saleswoman and we do have salesman. Okay. So again, salesperson is the most common term right now. Uh, we use salesperson to describe uh, people who are in sales. 
Uh, let me just check something here. Um, so I have another question here. I'm going to post that over here. Uh, Mehdi says, Bob, I live in Montreal and I want to know how can I have my own business, like a restaurant or something like that. So Mehdi, I don't know the actual laws in Montreal, but I would go to the town hall or the city hall and I would ask about um, what you need to know to start your own business. They probably have a little brochure that you could read. Um, and I'm going to take one more question here. Please bear with me as I get used to doing this. So Lolly says, how to introduce myself for the first time when I meet my boss? I would just use the same introduction you normally would. I would just say, hi, my name's Bob. Uh, I just started here a week ago. Maybe your boss doesn't know. Uh, and I work in the sales department. I know, something like that. Don't share too much personal information, but share a little bit. So uh, here we go. When you work in business, you tend to wear a business suit and we have uh, business suits for men and women. So this is the clothing that you wear if you work in business. Often a man will wear a suit jacket and a tie. Uh, I don't have a tie on, but uh, technically uh, teachers should wear a tie, shouldn't they? Um, I'm not sure. Um, but you have business, a business suit or the, um, when we talk about the clothing you wear if you work in business, we usually say business attire. So this is attire. So business attire refers to all of the types of clothing that you would wear if you worked in business. So you don't wear casual clothes uh, when you work in business. You definitely wear um, nicer clothes. Now, some businesses have loosened up their rules on what you can wear, um, but uh, you definitely wear, I'll show you a little closer, um, more formal attire if you work in business in traditional business. Um, and so what we call people in business is we call them white collar workers, um, which is different than a blue collar worker. And let me explain for a moment. So a white collar worker is someone, you can see this lady has a white collar. So you don't have to have a white collar, but a white collar worker generally has a job um, where you are doing more things with paper and people than you are lifting things or building things. So a white collar worker is like an office worker uh, or someone who works in an office building. So if you are in the world of business, you are considered a white collar worker. If you are in the world of real work <laughs> where you're building things and you are working with your hands, we say that you are a blue collar worker. So often when you read the news in English, um, you will hear, um, the, they'll talk about white collar workers or blue collar workers. So a white collar worker works in an office building. A blue collar worker usually works um, building houses, uh, building buildings. That's a weird phrase, isn't it? Building buildings. Um, let me just check something here. Looks good, everything's running good. Um, let me see what the next question is. Uh, so it's from Lanja. One second here. Uh, I'm clicking things and they're moving around on me. So let's get this next question uh, from Lanja says. I'll paste it over here in the chat. I don't know if it's related to business or not, but before I asked you what the meaning of entrepreneur was I hope you answer me. So Lanja, an entrepreneur is someone who decides they want to start a business. So maybe they already have a job and maybe they don't like their job or they're really good at their job and they, they think I should start my own business. So they go and they get some money from friends or relatives or a bank loan and they start their own business. That's what an entrepreneur is. So uh, very cool. Uh, let's see here. When you work in business, you work for a company. So this is Apple and it is a big company. So often you'll say, um, yeah, I was working for one company and I'm thinking of getting a job at a different company. So when you work in business, you work at a company. Um, let me see here. I have to scroll back. I'm just going to post in the chat again. If you have questions, please use the form that I linked there. I don't know if 
if I'm going to be able to get to all of them. Um, but we'll see. When you work for in business, you usually have an office and you'll actually hear people refer to their job as the office. Like, I have to go into the office today or um, I was at the office last week and someone gave me a phone call. So an office is the place where you work if you are in business. Um, or maybe you work in a cubicle. So you can see here, these people don't have you know, four walls and a door, they actually work in a small cubicle. So you might work in an office or you might work in a cubicle, one of the two. Um, we had this when we talked about buildings. Do you remember that lesson? Um, so you probably work in an office building if you work in the world of business. Um, so an office building is a building with lots of offices in it uh, where people do lots of work. Uh, let me see. Um, I'm going to take one more question here. It's from Jason. And the question is, what is the difference between sign and signature? And when do we use each? That's a great question, Jason. So first of all, let me find, I don't have a pen here. Um, we'll pretend this is a pen. Um, a signature is like if I wrote Bob the Canadian. That's not my real signature, by the way. But that is the script form of my name, and we call that a signature. Um, when you sign something, it means that you put your signature on it. So that's the difference, Jason, between those two things. Um, if you work for a really huge business, like a really, really big business, they might have a headquarters or a head office. So if you work for a company that has many, many office buildings across the world, one of those buildings will be the main headquarters or it will be the head office. So that's only if the business you work for or the business you run is really, really big. So um, I do wanna say hi to everyone in the chat. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, we're a little ways through a lesson on business right now. Uh, you might have to rewind later if you want to, uh, um, if you want to uh, watch parts that you missed, sorry. Uh, and I am asking people today if you have questions, um, there is a link in the chat that you can use to ask your question. Uh, let's see here. Um, Lolly has a question here. Let me uh, copy it and paste it over. So Lolly's question is, how do I sell myself really well? So when you sell yourself, um, it means that uh, you want people to like you. Um, you want people to believe in you. And the number one thing that I think you can do to sell yourself uh, is to be yourself. Um, don't try to be something you're not. I hope that made some sense, Lolly. Um, but uh, don't be fake. Um, be genuine, be real. So, um, so you are either a boss or you have a boss when you work in the world of business. Many people start their own businesses because they want to be their own boss. So for instance, Jen and I run a flower farm. Jen's the boss. Uh, one of the reasons Jen started that business is she wanted to be her own boss. So, um, but we have here boss, and you can use boss to refer to anyone who is one level above you if you work in a business, okay? Um, but we also have things like president. This is the person who is in charge of the whole business. Sometimes they're also called a CEO, which is a chief executive officer chief executive officer, but we just say CEO. Um, maybe you work for a manager or maybe you are a manager um, in a business. So maybe you have people that you are in charge of, or maybe you have a manager that you report to. That's how we describe uh, a manager. Or you might have a supervisor, or it simply might be the owner of the business who's the boss or the president. So the person who starts a business is referred to as the owner of the business. So um, everyone loves being a boss. Uh, nobody likes having a boss. Is that how it goes? <laughs> I think something 
a little bit like that. Um, let's see here. I'm going to do another question. So we have another question about the word. This word is hard, isn't it? So we have this question. Um, Vamos Tianvito says, please, can you teach us how to pronounce entrepreneur? So uh, that question came up once before. Entrepreneur is a very difficult word to say. So it's entrepreneur, but some people say entrepreneur. So I say entrepreneur. So there's two different pronunciations. Um, both are difficult though. Entrepreneur. Uh, good luck with that. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, so people are asking uh, me to give them business ideas in the questions. I don't have any business <laughs> ideas. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have another question from Haijun. It says, I want to know what to call people who are higher position than me. I think we just looked at that, right? So person above you is your supervisor or your boss or, or your manager. <laughs> I'm having trouble pointing. Uh, that's what you would call the people above you. Um, Let's see here. Um, again, if you have questions, I think there's a lot of questions coming in. Let me paste the link again. And I will try to get to your questions. Um, so the whole group of people in a business that run the business is called management. So if you are a supervisor or if you are a manager, it means that you work for management or you work in management. So there's the workers at this level and then the people above are called management, okay? A lot of people like to uh, work their way up in a company so they can be part of management. Um, if you are a boss or a CEO or in management, um, you might meet in a boardroom. So a boardroom is a room with a big table and chairs around the table uh, where people in a business will meet uh, to talk about things, to plan things, to come up with new ideas for the business. So this is a boardroom. So sometimes you'll hear things like, you know, uh, in the boardroom they decided that the company is going to open a new office in Memphis, Tennessee or something like that. So boardrooms are where the really important people in a business meet to make decisions. So. Um, let me see here. So there's two things that a business does. Either they produce products, which we also call goods. So a product is anything that you can hold in your hand. It is a thing. So a car is a product. Um, laundry soap is a product. Um, Let's see, uh, tractors are products. Everything, books are products. Anything you can make, and we call this things that are tangible, things you can touch. So even paper is a product. Um, that's what we call a product. As opposed to the opposite is a service. So let's look at it this way. When you have a smartphone, the product is the phone. The service is the data plan that you pay so that your phone works. Um, another way to look at it is, let's say uh, you need someone to build a fence. The fence is the product, but the person building the fence is providing a service. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Um, let's see here. Um, I'm gonna look at the questions again. Scroll over. Uh, let's see, business, ch oh, so here we have one from Alexander. Let me paste it over here. Alexander from Russia. Uh, by the way, hi to everyone in Russia. I want to give a shout out uh, to you guys. Alexander from Russia says, do you differentiate, can you differentiate between these definitions, a business chain and a business net? So I'm not sure what a business net is, but a business chain um, when we refer to something as a chain, it means they have multiple locations or stores. So McDonald's is a chain because they have McDonald's all over the city and they're all the same. They all look the same. We refer to that as a chain. So Alexander, hi, hi to Russia. Um, that's what the difference is. Um, a business strives to do one thing, 
and that is to make money or to turn a profit. When you have profit, it means that things are going well and your business is making money. So you can see this graph is going up. So this company is earning money and they are um, turning a profit or they have really good profits. The opposite <laughs> is, you're gonna see the graph goes the other way. The opposite is a loss. So businesses often talk in terms of profit and loss. So a loss then is when if sales are bad, if your business isn't doing well, uh, you will have a loss, which means you are losing money. You don't want to have a loss uh, if you are running a business, that's for sure. Um, let me take another question here. Looks like Abra Dahim says, Adder Hamain says, Uzad says, sometimes I find it difficult to separate between trade and business in English. So the simple way to differentiate is trade happens between countries. So if Canada and Spain have a trade agreement, then we exchange goods and we call that trade. Whereas business is just the universal term for um, someone gives you money, you give them a product or a service. So that's the difference uh, right there. Um, this is a cool one. If you are providing a service, um, if that is the business you're in, sometimes your customer will ask for an estimate. So let's say you want me to build a house for you, um, but you're not sure how much it's going to cost. I would tell you before I build the house what it's going to cost, and that would be called an estimate. So I would say it's going to be $150,000 to build your house. And if you like that amount, if you like the estimate, um, if you like what I say it's going to cost, then uh, you say go ahead. And when I'm done, I would give you an invoice. So an invoice is a piece of paper, or now they come on the internet, um, a digital document that tells you how much money you owe my business, okay? So the estimate is, my best guess of how much it's going to cost when I'm done the work, I would send you an invoice. Um, or if you buy products from me, I would send you an invoice. If you bought flowers from Jen, we would give you an invoice saying, you know, 12 bouquets of flowers at X amount of dollars each, uh, and you would pay that. Um, let's see here. Um, this is a good question. So this is from uh, Moj Taba says, what's the difference between wage uh, and salary? And can you give us some different way to say I make money? So a wage is when you're paid by the hour. So in Canada, oh, thanks genre genre for a super chat. That's the first super chat that I've gotten. So thank you. That's like just a little bit of money that genre genre is giving as a tip. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'll buy some coffee later with it. Um, so in Canada, Let's say you make $14 per hour, okay? I'm not sure you can see that, but that would be a wage. A salary is when a company or business says, we are going to give you, you know, $40,000 per year. So one, a wage is when you're paid by the hour, uh, and a salary is when you're paid by the year, okay? and you only get this money if you work this hour, but usually when you're on salary, you get this money um, all the time. You're expected to be at work, but you get this money all the time. So hopefully that makes sense. We do use wage in a broader sense to talk about all earnings, but um, yeah, negotiate. <laughs> so this is what businesses do um, with clients or with other businesses. And this means they're talking about how much something is going to cost. So if I say to you, I will sell you a bouquet of flowers for $10, and maybe you want to negotiate, you would say, I'll give you $8 for the bouquet, and I'll say, no, 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 I need at least nine, and you're like, I'll give you eight fifty, And so that would be negotiating on the price. In Canada, you don't often negotiate on the price uh, in small shops. I know in other countries, you negotiate a lot. You very much negotiate. 
uh, the price each time. Um, let me take another question here. So there's some people who, some of the questions are not about business. Um, let's see, oh, here's a good one. I am going through these in order, by the way, the questions. Uh, again, if you have a question, you can post it. There's a, a link in the description. Um, but it says, Jeff Peters says, hi, Bob, what is meant by business before pleasure? So business before pleasure means that it's, it's good to work a whole day before you sit down and relax. Um, so business before pleasure means uh, you shouldn't go to a movie in the morning. So you should work all day. You should work hard all day before you do something fun. So you shouldn't go out to eat in the morning. You should work first. And when you have a good full day of work um, done, then you should go out to eat or go see a movie or go out with your friends. So business before pleasure just means get your work done before you do something fun. Uh, my parents were very much in favor of business before doing anything fun. Uh, Beryl Vilson has a question here. Let me grab that one. Uh, and then we'll continue on with the lesson. It says, Beryl Vilson says, Hello, Bob. Is there any tip for attending an interview in Canada? Just practice a lot. And the government of Canada has a lot of information on their website. So the government of Canada has a really good website uh, for immigrants, for people coming to do interviews. Um, so look up, you know, government of Canada, uh, how to interview for a job in Canada, and you'll find good information there. Um, Mary says, so Mary, I have never heard of this word. Mary says, what is teacherpreneurship? Are you a teacherpreneur? I, I guess so. It's a newer word that I have not seen before, but it probably means a teacher like me who's teaching on the internet, <laughs> possibly. Um, let's see here. Questions from Lolly about, let me copy and paste that one. And then I'll get back to lesson. What are the procedures for working in Canada? Same thing, Lolly. Go to the Government of Canada website and do a search for how to work in Canada. And you'll probably find good information uh, about that. But let's keep going, folks. If you're in business, you probably go to the boardroom a lot for business meetings. So here you see a bunch of people at a business and they're talking about different ideas. When you go to a business meeting, there's usually an agenda. So an agenda, this isn't a great printout, but an agenda um, is a list of the things you are going to talk about in a meeting. Really good businesses have good agendas for their meeting and they follow their agenda really well because otherwise everyone just talks and you don't get anything done. Um, in business, you're always, remember the, remember the handshake? So you're always trying to get an agreement or a deal, um, either with a customer or another business. So when you have an agreement, you shake hands, um, but you also usually sign a contract. So a contract is a legal document. A handshake is only legal, I think, if people have witnessed it, like other people saw the agreement. Um, but a contract is a paper legal document. So if I was to um, sign a contract with you, you wanted to buy 20 bouquets of flowers every week for a whole summer, we would sign a contract. I would be legally obligated to provide those flowers and you would be legally obligated to pay me. That means that the, the agreement we made is a legal agreement. If you don't pay me, I can take you to court. I can get a judge to make you pay me. So contracts are legally binding, we say. Um, if you're in business, you probably have a competitor. So Pepsi and Coke are competitors. So a competitor is someone who provides the same product, the same service as you. So um, if you don't have a competitor, you're called a monopoly but most of the time you have a competitor. Uh, even here on YouTube, there's other English teachers. Did you know that? So even on YouTube, I have competitors. Um, let me see here. Um, Lucas says, is a blue collar worker the same as labor? Yes, that is very true. Um, 
Let's see, the next question is from Zeng. And it says, what's the difference between I will do business with his company or I will be doing business with his company? They are actually the same thing. Yeah, very much the same thing. Folks, I have about 15 more minutes. I hope we can get through everything. Uh, bigger companies have usually a trademark or a logo. So you probably all, I tried to find the most recognizable logo or trademark in the world and the internet said Nike. So this is Nike's trademark. It is copyrighted. You can't use this trademark unless you are Nike, okay? So this is interchangeably, we say trademark or logo. Um, and many times when you purchase something from a company, they will give you a guarantee or a warranty. So I guarantee that this lesson will help you. Um, that means that I believe enough in this video that I can say I guarantee. That means I promise that this lesson will help you. A warranty would be a written promise. So let's say you buy a car. It might, the, the salesperson might say, I guarantee you'll love this car but it also has a five-year warranty. So a warranty is a written legal statement from the business saying that if something goes wrong, if something breaks, they will fix it, okay? So a guarantee is a promise. A warranty is a written promise saying that they will fix anything that goes wrong. Warranties are good, by the way. Uh, we had this one. Trade is business between two different countries. So I know that Canada and the United States uh, have a lot of trade. That is our biggest trading partner. Um, and then when companies sell goods to another country, they send them away and that's called export. So when Canada sends products to the United States, we export those products. When we buy products from the United States, we import them. You see how the boat's coming to towards you now. <laughs> export, the boat was leaving, so the goods were going away. And import, the goods or products are coming to Canada, so we are importing them. Um, let's see here. I'm just going to look if there's a few more. There are lots of questions. Um, so I have a business. Yeah, questions about your business. Business. What was questions in the emails? Let's try this one. So here's the next question. Uh, it's a pretty long one. Um, I think it's too long, actually. I have to delete some of it, sorry. So this is not the whole question. Uh, Sengwook Han Hardy says, good morning, Bob. My question is in the email. We can see the email subject with heads up. Um, do we use this word to, oh, so heads up. Um, if I say heads up, it just means, um, hey, look at this or this is important. Um, so if I say, heads up people, we're gonna be writing an exam this morning. It means like, be alert, uh, be aware, or you should know that we're doing that this morning. Um, let's see here. This is from, a little trouble pronouncing the name. I think it's Dirk Viet, oh, Duvi, hi Duvi. How's League of Legends going for you? <laughs> um, can you explain B2B and B2C? So B2B is when a business sells products or services to another business. And B2C is when a business sells products to a consumer. So when I buy something from McDonald's, that is B2C, so business to consumer. But when McDonald's buys something from Coke, that's business to business or B2B. I hope I got that right. You should look up B2C because I was just guessing there, but sometimes I guess things. Um, when you send something to someone, you ship it or you have shipping. So even though this is not a boat, we still say shipping. So if I buy something from Amazon.com, they will ship it to me. So I have to pay for shipping. Um, all businesses spend money on advertising or marketing. So you can see here, all of these signs are considered advertising because the companies, the businesses pay money to have their product advertised. So um, when you uh, advertise a product or when you market a product, it means that you are creating television commercials, you are creating ads for the internet, 
advertisements, um, and you are spending money to tell people about your product or service. So maybe you're putting ads in magazines, maybe you're putting ads on television, maybe you're putting ads on YouTube, um, but that's all called advertising. Um, here's a good question. This goes back to estimate. So Eduardo Albertino says, do quotation and estimate have the same meaning? Yes, so you can give someone an estimate. You can also give someone a quote. Sorry, Eduardo, I should have, uh, I should have made sure I, I addressed that one. Um, let's see here. I should post, not sure I'm gonna have a lot more time. We're gonna finish this off. Let's keep going. When you have a business strategy, it means you have a plan. So maybe your strategy is you have a really successful restaurant in the Ukraine and you want to expand into Canada. Um, you would create a strategy. You would create a plan for how you would do that. So that is what a strategy is. Um, when you work at a company or a business, you always want to get a bonus. So if you do your job really, really well, um, maybe your boss will give you more money. That's called a bonus. So you have your regular pay, but you did your job so well, you got bonus pay. You got extra bonus pay. Um, in Canada, sometimes people get a Christmas bonus from work. Um, the other reason to work hard at work is you might want a promotion. Maybe you are, remember we, remember we talked, you know I say member sometimes, eh? I mean remember. Remember we talked about workers and management. Maybe you want to work really hard if you are a worker because you want your boss to give you a promotion so you can become a manager or you can become a supervisor. Um, and uh, just a few last things. If you don't like your job anymore, you can resign. So when you resign, it means you decide that you're gonna write a letter Dear boss, I no longer want to work here. Signed, Bob the Canadian. So when you resign, it means that you quit your job. Um, and if you're lucky, someday you work really hard, you can retire. So I really like this guy because he's just sitting and reading the newspaper. That's what I want to do someday when I'm retired. Although I think when I'm retired, I'm still going to make YouTube videos and I'll probably make a lot of them. Hey, um, that was the formal lesson. I'm going to dig into the questions now. Um, I think there's a few that I missed. Uh, let me go find a few. So how says, what does a business trainer do? So people who are really good at business sometimes train other people to do business. So that's what a business trainer would do. Um, John Lee says, what does rube mean? I'll post that one in there. So I think that is a type of currency. Um, I haven't looked it up yet, John, but that's what that is. Um, so, so the difference, says Mohammed, relates to period. So here, Mohammed says, so the difference relates to the period per hour per month. So this is an hourly wage. This is a yearly salary. That's actually how we refer to them. So wage goes by hour, uh, salary goes by year. Uh, let's see here. Luis says, um, just a second here. Yeah, Luis, I can't give you advice. I'll, I'll post your, your question in. I'm just not an expert uh, sometimes on everything. So Luis says, oh, I've, it's a little too long. There we go. Luis uh, says, Bob, this is Luis from Brazil. Hi, Luis. I have a business. I'm an electronics teacher and make courses and books to sell and plan them to make them in English as well. What do you think? If your English is good, uh, you should do that. I think that's a great, a great idea. Um, let me find the next question. Oh, this is from Vinicius. He says, I'm back. <laughs> What's the difference between agenda and schedule? So an agenda in Canada, I, I haven't checked what it is in the UK, but in Canada, an agenda is the, the meeting. When you have a meeting, it's the plan you use for the meeting. A schedule, so at my work, we have a schedule, and it simply tells me what I need to do during the week. So a schedule is usually a bit longer. So on Mondays, I need to be in the cafeteria to make sure students are behaving. On Thursdays, I need to be in the parking lot. So a schedule tells you where to be during the week. An agenda tells you what to do um, in a meeting. Uh, Victor has a question here. 
it is when do you use competitor and when do you use rival? So they are fairly equal. They are almost the same word. Um, I would say that um, we have a lot of business rivals, but we also have a lot of business competitors and it's the same thing, definitely the same thing. Um, Duvi says, can you explain the difference between brand and trademark? So they're pretty much the same thing. So Nike, their brand is the Swoop logo. McDonald's has the golden arches, the yellow M. Uh, let's see here. Luis said, oh, got that already. Oh, Anna has a good question here. Um, what is a company town? So sometimes a business will be so big that almost everyone in the town the business is in works for that business. And then we call it a company town because maybe there's only one company in town and it's so big that there's 500 people in town and almost everyone works at that company. We call it a company town. That's a great question. Um, I do have time for a few more questions, people. If I didn't get to your question, it's, oh, no, just a sec here. Um, I pasted that twice. Um, here we go. Copy. There we go. So if there are more questions, please ask them. I'll try to get to them. Um, let's see here. Can you tell us? Yeah, let me get this one in the chat for you. So this is from Moj Tabas is from Iran. Hello to everyone in Iran. Can you tell us some different ways to say I make money? I earn money. I make money. Um, I, I, I only know those two. <laughs> Sorry. I wish I knew more. Um, and we'll go from there. Uh, anyways, folks, I think that we broke a record again this morning. Um, can you make sure that you ask the questions um, in the form? Um, I know some people are asking the questions in the chat, but I really want to stick with the plan of um, only answering the questions. Otherwise, there's, um, there's just too many questions that come through the chat. So I have about five more minutes, folks, that I can answer questions. I'm just going to have a little drink. Some people don't like it when I slurp my drink, so I try not to slurp my drink anymore. Um, oh, here's a good one uh, from Michelle. Let me get that copied over. When I say copied over, it means I'm putting it in the chat. Michelle Lacoud says, could you tell, oh, Michelle Lee says, could you tell me the difference between employee and worker? In Canada and Canadian English, we use both words like, oh, I have uh, seven employees or I have seven workers in my business. So it is almost uh, the same word. Um, let's see here. The next question is from Samuel. Let me post that over. So it says, good morning, Bob. I'm from Brazil, Sao Paulo City, and I'm learning a lot by watching your videos. Please tell me what is the difference between curriculum and resume. So when you apply for a job, you either have to give them your CV, with, which is, I think, Latin for curriculum vitae, but we, we usually say resume. So a resume is a list of things about you, where you got your education, where you went to school, uh, other jobs you have had. So um, I know in Quebec, we call it a CV. So a CV or resume. So we in Canada, in English, usually call it a resume. So you, if you want to apply for a job, you give them a resume. They look over your resume uh, and then they decide if you're someone they want to hire. Um, let's see here. Lanja has a question. Let me post that over for a sec. Lanja says, Manager, administrator, supervisor, are they the same or different? So they're general terms, and they would mean almost the same thing in each company, um, but each company might have a slightly different job description, so they might describe them uh, a little differently. Uh, Annie has a question here. Let me put that over here. It says, what's self-employed business owner? So when you're self-employed, it means that you are a business owner, okay? So a self-employed person has started a business and they work for themselves. They are their own boss. That'd be pretty cool. Um, Lolly says, oh, this is a good question too. What is a counter offer? So let's say I wanna buy um, 
flowers from someone and uh, I say, I'll give you $100 for those flowers. And someone else says, I'll give you $90 for those flowers. The, the person offering the $90, that's a counter offer. So they're, um, they're competing with me to try and get the same flowers by offering less money. So um, Howard says, when is the next live? Uh, tomorrow night. Um, let's see here. Roger says, what's the meaning of COO? So Roger, I'm going to guess, I think it's chief operating officer. And I don't know if that's correct. You need to look it up. Um, but we have CFO, COO, CEO. There's a lot of different acronyms um, and you'll need to look them up. This is the last question, folks, and then I need to go. Vince says, hello, Bob, what is a civil servant? So a civil servant is someone who works for the government. So I can work for a bank and then I'm just a bank worker, but I can work for the government and then I am a civil servant. So that's it. Um, I know there's one last question. I said it was the last one, but one more came in from Piper. It says, what's the difference between profit and margin? I actually don't know right now. Profit is at the end of the year, how much money you made above your expenses. And uh, I have to look up what margin is. Sorry, I'm kind of losing my ability to think on my feet, but hey, that was a lesson on business. I hope you used it as a beginner lesson for new vocabulary, as an intermediate lesson for listening. Hopefully you can watch this again tomorrow. If you watch this tomorrow, it will have subtitles. Um, and don't forget to click subscribe if you're new here and give me a thumbs up. I'm Bob the Canadian. There's way more videos to watch if you wanna watch more videos to help you learn English. By the way, some of you ask if I could speak my normal speed. That's my normal speed right there. That's how fast I normally talk. Anyways, I have to say bye to everyone. Uh, I need to get some work done. I am at work and I need to go do that work. So hopefully this lesson helped you. Uh, again, uh, have a great weekend. I know for some of you the weekend has started. And by the way, I like everyone from every country in the world. Uh, last week there were a couple comments where people said they thought I didn't like people from Russia. I love people from Russia. I love people from every country in the world. Um, that's the truth. Anyways, Bob the Canadian here. Um, I'm going to push the button. Don't forget to watch this again tomorrow. Have a good day.